right, I got held up for a little while. Okay, it happens. We're talking about some very, very turbulent topics, okay? Very, very turbulent topics. And this is very difficult for me to do because I know the ramifications of thought and the process that this will initiate in the minds of some. Nonetheless, we got to do it. We got to freaking do it, man. We really do. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of bring us to another point here real quick. And we're going to slow down and put the brakes on what I was talking about with evolution. And I want you to see now what the alternative is if you are not beginning to understand the reasoning or the train of thought that I'm bringing you with this progressive creation or this created evolution. And remember to reflect on the way that the Bible was wording it. Let the earth bring forth. Let the waters bring forth. Every animal after its kind. Now that's progressive evolution, plain and simple. And that's a beautiful way to eloquently state it. Every animal after its kind. That ensures that we're seeing the genetic heritage and experiences being passed on, the adaptive traits from one animal generation to the next. We're going to put the brakes on that because I know I'm already starting to lose some subs. No big deal. Okay, no big deal. It's just ironic that they're about to leave before they just get a little deeper into this and really see that we're going to be able to validate it. I want you to see what the alternative is, my friends, that if you're not un if you're unable to conceptualize what I'm trying to share with you thus far, this is the alternative. If you don't believe that there's been a progressive creation, a progressive evolutional creation, then you're left with no other alternative than they have created you. And that's what they're going to use in the Bible. They're going to use the descriptions in the Bible that are Sumerian and Babylonian recitations of earlier epics, early literary works that are descriptive of these beings manipulating the genetic stock on this planet, okay, the early human race. So they didn't create the human race. The Bible is telling you that we were here from the very beginning, and I'm going to show you that, and Jesus is going to validate that for us. So this is that alternative, friends. Let's listen closely here. We're in Psalms 139. I'm going to read verses 15 and 16. Listen very close. This is a description of the creation of man, but it's not us. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. Now, my friends, that is nothing like what you read in Genesis. Once again, this is Psalms 139, verses 15 through 16. What you are reading is an actual account of an Anunnaki recitation of the creation of what's known as a primitive worker, an, an Adamu or an Adapa, which is real close to Adam. Okay? So you were seeing, and listen, when this person, when I was made in secret, curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth, who resides in the lowest parts of the earth? Who is king of the bottomless pit? Well, from the Hebrew Bible, you know of him as Apollyon. The Sumerian count calls the king of the Apsu, which is the Hori Deep, which is also connected as the bottomless pit, or the god of the underworld. His name is Inki, or Ea, which means whose home is water. So we see that somebody was made curiously in the lowest parts of the earth, not by our God, but by somebody else. I'll be back. 